I just believe that, that yeah, I just believe that God, God is yet doing it even now. He's giving somebody the peace that goes beyond your understanding. Hallelujah. 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 Guide us, Lord, as only you can. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I sense the Lord uh, just pushing, pushing directly to, uh, to the word today. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back later and, and gather in our offering and share some updates with you about uh, what's coming up in our church. Uh, but I want to I press in. I want to press in uh, to, to this word. If you'll stand with me one more time. We have been studying in the book of Acts, and we're going we're gonna to continue to press our way through uh, this, this book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 uh, is where we, where we still are today. Uh, remember, we talked about this book of Acts is uh, a book that shows us the birth of the church and what God did in the birthing of his church, how he grew his church, how he developed his people. And we saw that on the day, a day called the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came in power. And the disciples were filled with the Spirit of God. And they began uh, to declare the works of God in languages that they did not know. But others around knew those languages. And they began to declare those works of God. And some people wondered what was going on. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 14, Peter stood up. The Bible says he stood up with the 11 and he raised his voice and he addressed the crowd. He said, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. This is God's word for us today. You may be seated in his presence. I want to preach for a few moments from, from the topic, I need a word. Come on, somebody just declare, I need a word. I need a word. I, a word. I see somebody in the back already raising your hand. I need a word. I need a word. And I, I really, I really, the Lord led me to, to, to really dive in and teach today. Uh, but we're going to see how the Lord uh, leads us and how we flow in this encounter. I need a word. Come on, look at somebody. Tell them I need a word. In the year 1991, gospel minister and an artist, musician uh, by the name of Thomas Whitfield, uh, he uh, released and recorded a song entitled, We Need a Word from the Lord. Uh, this song gained momentum and uh, this, this artist, this minister began to travel all over uh, the world uh, sharing this song and ministering to people these lyrics. Even beyond him, other artists have, have picked up this song and begun to sing it. He says in this song, we don't need another political uprising. We don't need another conqueror on the scene. My God. He says what we need is a special word that will bond within our hearts and give us direction from above. We need a word from the Lord. We need a word from the Lord. 
shortly after this song was released, just a few years later, another popular artist by the name of Donnie McClurkin released a song called Speak to My Heart. Somebody remembers, y'all remember that song, Speak to My Heart, Speak to My Heart, Holy Spirit. He says, give me the word. I need a word that will encourage me. He, 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 begins, he begins to share that, that God, it's, it's when you speak to my heart that, that I, get, I get released from the snare. How you love me and care for me when you speak to my heart. That's what we are trusting God to do. That, that's really why many of us are in the house this morning and why even the title of the message began to resonate with many because you will say, I, I need a word from the Lord. I need the Spirit of God to meet me in this place and to give me what I have been hungering and thirsting after. I know, I know everybody not on the same tip. Some people came because you wanted to check some stuff off a list and say, all right, I made it. Some people came because you felt like it was just a thing to do and maybe you ain't had nothing else to do before you went to brunch. But I believe there are a few folks in the house this morning who said, you know what, I'm coming because I need a word from God. I'm coming because I need an encounter with his spirit. I'm coming because I need power from on high that's going to direct me, that's going to empower me to live as God has called me to live. I need a word. Come on, somebody say, I need a word. I, I, need, a, I need a word from the Lord. In, in fact, some of us in here are going through issues and circumstances in our lives, and, and, and what, we're, what we're in need of is, is God just to speak directly to it. We, we, we've been in our devotion and in our, in our Bible study. We've been seeking God in our small groups. And we're saying, God, I need you just to continue to speak so I won't, I won't make the wrong decision, my God. Anybody ever been there? We say, God, I, I just need you to speak so I won't move out of my flesh. I won't move out of what I feel. I won't move out of what I think is right. But I, I need to get to a place where I don't lean on my own understanding. But in all my ways, I acknowledge you and you will direct my path. I, I need, I need a word from the Lord. And so I, I want to I teach and preach today, uh, but I want to I walk us through at least four different ways the Lord ministers his word and wants to minister his word to you and I. I believe he's going he's to do it in our midst. He's going to do it in this space, but he's also going to do it beyond this space. When we say, God, I need a word from the Lord, God is faithful. He is faithful to respond to the requests that are in alignment with his will and way. And so God ain't, God ain't always going to move when we say, God, I need, a, I, need a, I need a Range Rover. He may not move on your path. God, God, I need, I need a new house. He, he might not move in that moment, but when you say, God, I need a word, God is faithful to respond to move on our request. James says, we have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask for the wrong stuff. Oh, but what would happen when we start asking for the right stuff? God, this, God, I need more of your spirit. I need more of your grace. I need more of your wisdom. I need more of your anointing on my life. I need more of your discernment, God, that I might make the decisions that you have for me. I need a word. Somebody say, I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. There are, there are at, least, at least four, at least four different words or ways the Lord ministers, he ministers his word to us. The first way that I believe I want to highlight to you today is I need, listen now, I need a doctrinal word. 
Ah, stay with me. Stay with me, family. I need a, I need a doctrinal word. Here we are. Here we are in Acts chapter 1 and 2, and I'm going to walk us through how Jesus ministers his word to us in different ways. In Acts chapter 1, we'll pull up verse 3 on the screen. The scripture says that after his suffering, he presented himself to them, gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and watch this. And he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Doctrine. Doctrine is a set of teachings or beliefs that we operate by. And so as Jesus is gathering with his disciples, one of the first things he does is he begins to teach them a set of beliefs about the kingdom of God. Over and over again, as we read the Word of God, Jesus is saying the word or the, the, the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like because he wants them to develop an understanding, a set of teachings and beliefs about who he is and what he has come to do. So he begins, he begins with a, a doctrinal word because it is our understanding of doctrine or the teachings of the word of God that then lead us into right practice of the word of God. I, I, I cannot have right practice if I do not understand right doctrine. And so, and so Jesus comes and says, I'm going to talk to you all about the kingdom. I, I've got I've to give you a, a basis for how you understand this world. Family, it is, it is doctrine or this teaching of a set of beliefs that helps us to create a worldview upon which we can operate. And it is that worldview that gives us clarity on how we live. On last week, some of y'all, some of y'all may have seen it. I don't know, y'all might have been a little bit too early, but on last week, I got word, I got word that while we were, while we were here gathering in worship, uh, at the end of worship, outside, there were a bunch of, of brothers outside uh, that, that we call Hebrew Israelites. Some of y'all, some of y'all saw them on the way out. Y'all see the brothers, the Hebrew Israelites, uh, and, and they were outside, they were outside waiting for y'all to get out of church. And <laughs> they were waiting for you all to get out. Of, I wish I could have been out there. They were waiting for you all to get out of church because they said, this is what they're saying. I know they don't really know what they believe. Mm. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to line up outside the church on Easter. Because we know there's going to be a lot of vulnerable sheep that we can pick off because they don't really know what they believe. They, they've come in and maybe a lot of times have gotten words that have made them feel good. They've gotten words that may have made them dance, but they have not dug deep enough to actually know what they believe. So when I pick up the Bible and I quote a couple scriptures out of context, I will have them leave thinking that they don't know the God who is the true God. This, this is why, this is why I need, a, I need a, a doctrinal word that helps me to understand who God is. Because it is, it is the, the doctrinal word that gives me clarity that, that, watch this, that God is sovereign. I understand that. As I understand the character of God, I understand uh, part of his attributes. It's he is a sovereign God. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He's omniscient. He knows all things. And then I also understand that he is working all things together for my good. And so as I grab a hold of, of doctrine, then I can live life in the way God has designed me to. This is why when Paul is writing a letter to Timothy, he says to him, watch your life and doctrine closely. Ah, uh, see, y'all ain't, ain't know that scripture. <laughs> see, if I, if, I had said, if I said I can do all things, y'all have said through Christ who gives me strength. But Paul tells Timothy, the same man, he says, Timothy, I need you to watch your life and doctrine closely. Mm. 
Because if you don't know what you believe about God, if you don't know what you believe about his spirit, if you don't know what you believe about humanity, you will find yourself in a place you never imagined you would be in because you did not have a doctrinal word. Are y'all hearing me? <laughs> so I need, I need, I need, first I need a, I need a, a, a doctrinal word. That's why Jesus begins to teach his disciples about the kingdom of God because he wants them to have a firm foundation upon which they can operate as, as they are uh, living in this world. He wants them to be built up so that they are not blown by every wind of teaching and doctrine. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, same man, Brother Paul is writing, and, and he's writing about how God set up his church. And he says, God, he gave some to be apostles and some uh, to be prophets and, and, and teachers and pastors and evangelists. And he said he did this, he did this so that the people would be built up. Be built up. It's on the screen. Come on down to verse, verse 13. It says, until we all reach unity in the faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God, and we become mature. God said, I'm looking for some, for some believers who are growing up in the faith. Attaining, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then here it is, verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants. Yeah. Yes, Woo! Ooh, look at somebody tell them grow up lord have mercy then then we will we will no longer be infants bring that thing back up for me please olivia we will we no longer be infants and this is this is where it goes it says tossed back and forth by the waves see so let me let me i gotta walk this through i wasn't even planning to go here but we get tossed back and forth the waves are the waves of what's happening in our lives Right? So our, our lives have issues. We run into problems. We run into concerns. And, and the waves will toss us back and forth and in some cases make people deny their faith. But it's not only the waves of issues in life. It's been, watch this, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching. The word there is a word that could be translated also doctrine. And they're blown back and forth by every wind of doctrine because I never had any firm foundation in who is God, who is Jesus Christ, why did he come to the earth, who is the spirit of God, what are we as humans, why are we here on this earth, what is the chief end of man to glorify God and enjoy him forever. I never had any rooting in that. And so now I'm blown back and forth by every wind of teaching. And by the cunningness and the craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. And so then, then I just start to search for every which way to get myself a breakthrough. And I, and I burn some sage and, and, and then I, I get some tarot cards or, and then I mix it all together because I never had a foundation. I never, had a, I never had a foundation. That's why I need a, a doctrinal word. That's why I got to be connected. I got to be connected to a, a, a study where we gather around the word of God and understand who he is because that's what helps me to walk by faith and not by sight. I mean, I could stay here. I could stay here all day. But I got to press. I got to press. I got to press. I, I also need, watch me now, I need a practical word. I need a doctrinal word. Secondly, I need a, a practical word. Watch what happens. Watch, I'm, I'm still in the text. Acts chapter 1, Jesus, it says, he taught them about the kingdom of God. But then, watch this, right in the next, in the next couple verses, it says, he said to them, verse 4, do not leave Jerusalem. Woo, this, this is good right here. He says, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. What are you showing me, Pastor? Initially, he's teaching them about the kingdom of God. He is teaching them doctrine. He's teaching them a set of beliefs or patterns of which they should operate. And then he goes from patterns or beliefs to instruction. 
Woo! Because the teachings or the patterns and beliefs that God gives us then give us insight into how we should walk it out. But I have to be rooted in the doctrines so that then I can understand the practices. So he teaches him about the kingdom, and then he says, now the instruction is, don't leave here. I, I got to give you a, an instructive word. Don't leave here, because you're going to be, you're going to encounter the Spirit. You're going to be baptized by the Spirit. He says, then, then you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is a practical instruction. And once I'm rooted in, in the teaching, I then can walk out the practice. Once, I'm, once, I, once I begin to understand in Ephesians 5, Christ, Christ begins to break down, or Paul begins to break down, that, 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 that Jesus represents the head of the church. And he says, husbands are to love their wives like Christ loved the church. And so what Jesus, what, what, what Paul is trying to help us understand is that, is that doctrinally, doctrinally, Jesus Christ came and he died. He gave up his life for the church. He gave up his life for his bride, which is the church. This is what we understand, part of why he came and who he is. Because we grasp that truth, then we can apply it to our relationships. But I will never love my wife like Christ loved the church if I don't believe or understand what Christ did for the church. Because I can't practice it right if I don't understand, if I'm not rooted in it. And so Jesus says, listen, now I've given you, I've given you a, a, a doctrinal understanding. Now I got to give you some practice yeah. yes, so that you can then walk out the faith you profess. You can then walk out what you say you believe. Why? Because this is, this is where the doctrinal word helps me to understand the practical word. Some cases, some cases you, you might hear, you might hear people refer, uh, refer sometimes to a, a, a practical word or to a, a word that's directly for somebody as a, as a rhema word. You've heard somebody say, you maybe, maybe heard that term before, rhema word. Uh, rhema is a Greek word that, that essentially means utterance or a saying, whereas another word in the Greek for word means is logos, and logos means uh, a word of teaching or a word of practice. And so sometimes uh, what I need is a logos word that helps me to understand, that gives me the teaching, but then I also need a rhema word that will be a practical word that gives me intentional direction for my life. And so I need a word. I need a word. Somebody say, I need a word. I need a, a doctrinal word. The doctrinal word then will help me to understand and apply rightly the practical word. Can I go, can I go to number three? Y'all ready? <laughs> Y'all ready? So I need, a, I, need a, I need a doctrinal word. I need a practical word. But in the text, I see I also need a word for when I don't have the words. I know I'm walking y'all through a lot this morning. I know. Just stay with me, y'all. That's why we got to lock in. I, I need a word when I don't have the words. What happens? What happens? What happens on the day of Pentecost? What happens on the day of Pentecost is that the disciples of Jesus Christ have been gathered in a room. We call it, uh, the, the Bible calls it an upper room. They've been gathered in a room and they have been praying and seeking God for what he was going to do. He said, don't leave here. Don't leave Jerusalem until, until I send you power from on high, until I give you exactly what you need. And, and so what happens is they've been praying, but they don't know what else they are supposed to say. They don't know what they are supposed to speak. And so this is what God says. God says, I am actually now going to give you a word coming out of your mouth for when you don't actually have the words. 
you don't have the words to say because here there are gathered in Jerusalem people from all over the world whose languages you do not speak, you do not know how you are actually going to reach them. And so what God says is, I am going to send you a word for when you do not even have the words to say. So when you get up out of this room, all of the sudden out of your mouth will flow words in their languages that you did not know and they will say as the scripture declares they are declaring the works of God and we hear them in our own languages because God says, God says, part of what happens on the day of Pentecost and part of what happens in, in the gift of tongues is that I'm giving you a word when you don't have words. Can, can, I, can I help you? Can, can we go a little deeper? Paul, Paul picks up on this in, in Romans, in Romans chapter 8. Romans, Romans chapter 8. Uh, it's going to appear, hopefully it'll appear on the screen. If you, if you don't, find it in your Bible, write it down. Romans, Romans chapter 8. Paul, Paul says, he says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we don't know what we ought to pray. We don't know. We, we get into spaces and, and anybody ever been there where you, just, you don't even know? People say, I need you to pray. And, or maybe you going through in your own life and, and you're just trying to figure out how do I get through what I'm going through. And the Bible says we don't know what to pray. Sometimes there are people that are going through issues in my family and, and, and sometimes God will place somebody on my mind or on my heart, but I don't know exactly what to pray. And the scripture says the spirit helps us in our weakness. We put that thing back on the screen. The Spirit, the Spirit of God intercedes is, is what one translation would say. He intercedes for us. The groans sometimes that cannot even be understood. Have you ever, have you ever seen somebody in a, in a moment of, of worship or prayer where, where they couldn't even open up their mouth to pray the words, but it was just so deep, something was going on so deep in them or so deep in their lives that they could not even get words out. But God says, I got a word when you don't have words. I'll meet you when you don't even have the words to say or to pray. I will flow through you. I will minister through you and to you because I sent my spirit to work on the inside of you. I'll give, I'll give you, I'll give you a word, a word, a prayer when you don't have the words. I'll give you words that will flow out of you. Jesus says out, out of you will flow rivers of living water. Why? Because I want to give you a word even when you don't have words. Part of, part of the, the gift, the gift of tongues that we see operating on the day of Pentecost is God gives his sons and daughters, he gives them access to languages, real languages that they do not know. And he speaks them through them. But another part of that gift that we see in operation in the scripture is that God also can give his sons and daughters access to heavenly languages. You, you ever been to a wedding? You've been to a wedding? Uh, anybody been to a wedding in the house? Been to a wedding? Yeah? Yes, most of y'all, everybody else lying. You know you've been to a wedding. <laughs> and at, at the wedding, the wedding oftentimes, one of the most popular scriptures that's read is 1 Corinthians 13. Y'all, and some of y'all, maybe you don't know it by name, but when I start to say it, you'll always say, oh, I know that one. I know that one. Because at, at, at the wedding, they say, love is patient. Love is kind. Amen. <laughs> They're just trying to help you out right at the beginning, Pastor Will. <laughs> they say, love keeps no record of wrongs. My God. <laughs> love does not boast. It is not proud. And, and so, and so the, the, the reader or the, the preacher, whomever, is reading, reading those words uh, at, at the wedding. But, but the context actually begins a little bit earlier at, at verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 13. And they don't always read this, but they do. And if we read it, you got to pause because Paul says, he says, If I speak in the tongues of men and angels 
but don't have love, I am a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I'm just making noise. But what we can't miss there is that Paul says there are languages of men and there are languages of angels. <laughs> Woo! Some of y'all are missing that thing. And so Paul says, Paul says, Paul says, therefore, when we pick up later on in this text, 1 Corinthians 13 and 14, Paul says, therefore, I am going to pray with my mind. I'm going to pray with my understanding. Especially when I'm in the house of God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray with my understanding. But I'm also going to press into God, and, and, and I'm going to press into God to see if there's more that he has for me that I might be able to pray beyond my own understanding. Because sometimes there are things that are happening in my life and in the world and in people around me that I don't know exactly what to pray, but God will give me words when I have no words. Are y'all with me? I, I'm just walking us through what's happening here in Acts chapter 2. He says, he says, listen, I need to give my children a doctrinal word because they need to understand a set of beliefs and practices. I then need to give them a practical word so they can live out the doctrine that I have shown them. But then I also need to give them supernatural words because this life that we live is not just in the natural, but it's also in the supernatural so that they can have words when they don't have words. I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend more time on this in, in the weeks to come. So, so I, I need a doctrinal word. I need a practical word. I need a word when I don't have words. Number four, I need a prophetic word. Ah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here in the text. For Acts, Acts chapter 2. The Bible says... Bible says that, that all of this was, was happening, and then Peter stood up. And Peter says, let me explain to you what's happening. These brothers ain't tipsy. The, I know you think they're drunk, but that's not what's going on. <laughs> He says, he says, it's only nine in the morning. And then, this is what it is, y'all. He says, no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Woo. Don't miss it, family. Peter begins to say, the only way that we can understand what is happening in our context is if we have clarity on the prophetic word that's already been spoken. Ah. The, on, the only way that we can grasp what's going on in this moment is if we have clarity on what's been spoken through the prophets before us. This is part of why it's critical for us to have a strong grasp on the Word of God because I cannot understand what's going on in my life right now if I do not have a strong grasp on what God has already spoken over me in His Word. What He's spoken over me doctrinally, what He's spoken over me practically, but also what he's spoken over me prophetically. The reason why thousands of folks gathered in churches all over the world last week is because there was a prophetic word that said that there would be a man who would be suffering on a cross. He would be a man of sorrows and that by his stripes we would be healed. The reason why we gathered is because Isaiah prophesied that thousands of years before before Jesus came to the earth. And when Jesus got here, he said, I will destroy this temple. They will destroy it, but I'll rebuild it in three days. Because he was speaking a prophetic word that gave understanding to what was happening in the natural. 
And so part of, part, of what, part of what God does and part of how God moves in our lives is he gives us the scriptures. He gives us the word of God that we might be able to grow from, that we might be able to learn from. But then he also places people in our lives who are filled with the spirit of God who oftentimes will speak a word over us. Sometimes, sometimes that word is a, is a word of encouragement, and God calls us to be encouragers of each other. He calls us to lift each other up. He calls us to support each other. That's why it's so critical, family, for us to be connected in the body of Christ. You cannot do this by yourself because sometimes you just need somebody in your circle to roll up on you and say, you going to get through this. Sometimes you need a brother to put their hand on your chest and say, you got what it takes. You are going to get through this. I know that God is working in your life. I just came to encourage you that God is not through with you yet. But in addition to that word of encouragement, sometimes we also as believers, we need prophetic words. These are words that are spoken directly through the Spirit of God that God is loving and gracious enough to use a human being to roll up on you and to say specifically, this is not just what I thought, but I really believe the Lord is saying, God sent me to tell you this. We were, we were gathered here, we were gathered here, the leaders, many of the leaders of the church on, on Good Friday, we gathered here as leaders in the church to, to, to pray together and to worship together and to encounter God's presence together. And as we were gathering here, God was speaking to, to different persons in the room and they began to go up to others and, and to share exactly what God was sharing with them. And, and Elder Boyd, after we left, he had, to, he had to press out, but after we left, he called me, he said, Pastor, God began to speak to me for you. And, and he, he had trouble. He had trouble getting all of it out because the Spirit of God was so heavy on him. But he began to speak a direct word that God had given him for me. And the word, the word, the word, according to scriptures, it says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the scriptures are clear. It says in New Testament that prophecy, prophetic words are designed to encourage, to strengthen, and to comfort. And the word that he spoke, spoke specifically to an area of need in my life. That he would not know if God did not tell him. Now, now, let me be clear, let me be clear. The, the, the difficulty in this space is that prophecy still needs to be evaluated. Because everybody who say they got a word from the Lord don't always have a word from... Uh, <laughs> everybody who say they got a word for you don't always have, have a word for you. Some people just ate the wrong thing. Some folk just want attention. And so we must, we must test the spirit. We must evaluate. According to 1 Corinthians 14, the word must then be evaluated, but it does not negate the fact that we need it. Because part of what, what some have done in the church is say, well, because we don't know how to rightly regulate it, because it can get out of control, we will completely push it to the left. But God says, that was never my design. My design was for the faithful and orderly and spirit-filled prophecy and words that go forth that honor me. Why? Because I need a doctrinal word. I need a practical word. I need a word when I don't have the words. I need a prophetic word that will help me understand what's happening in the world in a moment. That, this is why this thing blesses me, y'all, because Peter says, listen, unless you understand the prophecy about this season, everything that's happening is going to be confusing to you. 
and for many folks in this room, that there, are, there are prophetic words that have been spoken over your life that have been confirmed. And God is saying, unless you understand the word that's been spoken over your life, you're going to mess around and be in the wrong job. You're going to be in the wrong city. You're going to be in the wrong relationship. You're going to be in all the wrong spaces because you cannot operate without the context of what God has spoken over your life. So I need, I need, I need, I, I need a, a doctrinal word. I, I need then the doctrinal word to flow into my, my practical living because orthodoxy leads to orthopraxy. It leads to right doctrine leads to right practice. I need, I need then a, a, a word for when I don't have words because there needs to be a supernatural empowering of how I live out this right practice. And I, I need the prophetic word to speak over my life and give me clarity in certain areas. But then, then then the last word that I want to give you all, I told you four, but this is five, but five really is what undergirds all four. The last word that I need is I need the living word. Yeah. 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 What, what, what do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean, Pastor? Uh, uh, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter four, uh, they'll put it on the screen. It says that the word of God is alive and active sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The Word of God, here, 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 the writer of Hebrews, actually, if we're if we real specific, the writer of Hebrews ain't even talking about the New Testament because he ain't had that yet. But he's saying, what God, what I know that God has already given us is living and active. He, he's talking about the scriptures. He's talking about the, the, this, this canon that had been put together by those who were moved by the Holy Spirit. He's saying this is living and is active. And it's, it's powerful enough, watch this, to, to cut us. Woo! If you ain't ever been cut by the word, then you might have the wrong one. He said it's, it's powerful enough to, to cut us. And sometimes, watch this, the cutting that the word is doing is not cutting to, to hurt you, my brother, my sister, but it's surgery that God wants to perform on you uh, that you might then operate rightly. Uh, you see, anybody, anybody ever been in for surgery, it doesn't always feel good. It's not always, it's not always a joyful feeling initially. Uh, oh, but when you come up out of that thing, uh, you realize there have been some things reshaped. That there have been some things that have been strengthened. There have been some things that have been renewed so that you will walk right, so that you'll be able to operate and function right. And so the scriptures say the word of God is living and active. We, we see this in Acts chapter 2. My God, I'm in the text. Acts chapter 2. I'm jumping down real quick to Acts chapter 2, and I believe it's verse 37. Is that where we are? Acts 2 and 37. It says, when the people heard this, they were cut. My God. Because the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. When the people heard what Peter was saying, they were cut to the heart. Because the word of God is living and active. And if I'm going to understand the doctrinal word, if I'm going to live out the practical word, if I'm going to walk in the supernatural when I don't have words and when I receive a prophetic word, it is all undergirded by having in me the living word. Ah, 
Every, see, see, everything I've shared in the first four is buttressed by number five. But I need you to, to understand number five is actually bigger than you think. Because you might think that this in and of itself is the living word. But in John chapter one, we find something a little bit different. But it builds upon what we're sharing. It says in John chapter one, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the Word was God. And then when you jump, wait a minute, when you jump down to, to verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. That means the word that I need is not just only encompassed in this book, but it is encompassed in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. If I'm ever going to live out his doctrines, if I'm ever going to walk right in my practice, if I'm ever going to have supernatural power to have words when I don't have words, and to understand the context of my life, I've got to be undergirded. I've got to be buttressed. I've got to be engulfed by the living word who is Jesus Christ. That's why Paul would say in Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I need you to be filled up with Jesus. I need you to walk with Jesus. I need you to live every moment by the power of Jesus in your life. This is why he came back and appeared to the disciples because he needed them to understand that you've got to have me inside of you and even when I leave I'm going to send my Holy Spirit because my Holy Spirit is the full manifestation of who I am. If I don't leave he won't come but when he comes you're going to have the living word on the inside of you. You're going to have rivers of living water on the inside of you. You're going to have an understanding about how you should live and function in this world because I'm sending myself. I'm sending myself. I'm, I'm sending my spirit to manifest in you. And somebody said, I need, I need a word. I need a word, Pastor. God told me to tell you, if you receive me, my word is in you. The Word became flesh and dwelled amongst us. That's the one who's living on the inside of you. That's the one who empowers the way you function, the way you operate. That's the one who orders your steps. That's the one who can give you clarity when nobody else has the answers. And when anybody else that you have in your corner, in your surroundings, begins to speak, you got to discern, do they have the living word on the inside? Are they speaking what they think? Or have they been empowered by the one who lives on the inside? By the one who holds our futures? By the one who restores our souls? Because he's the only one that can give us everything when we need a word. Mm. God, we come today because we need you. We come today, Lord God, because we need clarity about how we function, how we walk in this world, how we operate. We come, Lord God, because in this world that we live in, Lord God, we, we are 
seemingly, Lord God, attacked on every side by issues and concerns, by worries, by struggles, Lord God, by trials that we had no idea were on the way. And we recognize today, Lord God, we recognize in your presence that the only way that we survive, the only way we thrive as you've called us to is if your spirit is on the inside. If the living word, Jesus Christ, has borne witness inside of us. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. And so, Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that you would increase our desire, increase our hunger for you, for your presence, for your truth. Increase even right now, Lord God, yeah, God, increase our desire to read your word, Lord God, to study the scriptures that we, we might show ourselves approved, to study the scriptures that we might find out who you are, that we might read, Lord God, in your word who you are and, and who you have designed us to be as your sons and daughters, that we might see, Lord God, clearly what you desire to do in the world, Lord God. I pray for a hunger amongst your people, Lord God that turns us back to you, Lord God, not just to group gatherings. God, I'm excited that, that people are, are coming into the building. I'm excited that people are, are hungry and people are getting connected. But I know it's not a building you want to fill. I hear God. I know it's not a building you want to fill, but it's our hearts. And so, Father, I pray, I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that you would draw us to that place, that place of, of hunger, that place of thirst after you, according to Matthew 5 and 6, Lord God. You said, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would be hungry, Lord God, for your doctrines, hungry, Lord God, to understand who you are and who your spirit is and how you move in our lives, hungry for your instruction that that we might walk this world, Lord God, in the way you have designed us to. Hungry, Lord God, for the gifts of your spirit, Lord God, that we might operate in supernatural power. Hungry, Lord God, for the living word, Jesus Christ, that you would fill us, Lord God, even as Paul declared that we would be continually filled, that we would walk by faith and not by sight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying. I'm praying, Lord God. That I hunger for you. That I thirst for you. According to your word. Would be filled. Mm. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Do y'all know that? It's not a building. It's not a building. I just hear that the Lord said it's not a building he wants to fill. But it's our hearts. Come on, right now, just begin to ask God to, to fill your heart. For every decision, every concern that's weighing on you, for every, every issue that you need to respond to, say, God, I, I don't want to go toward, I don't want to move toward it without you. I don't want to move toward it in my own thinking and own flesh. But I want to move, Lord God, with clarity from you. I want to move filled, Lord God, by your spirit. Thank you, Lord. 
Come on, just you got it in your mind right now. You know what it is that's been weighing you down. You know what it is that's been worrying you. You know what it is that's been bothering your family members. And you see, you see the stress in them. You see the, the pain on them. And, and you're saying, God, give me the strength by your spirit. Mm. Come on, ask him, ask him, ask him. Fill us, Lord. Meet us, Lord. Cover us, Lord. Keep us, Lord. It's not a building you want to fill. Yeah. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not, not a building you want to fill, but it's my heart. This empty space. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill, but it's my heart. It's my heart, God. This empty space. It's what you wanted all along. It's what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill, but it's my heart. This empty space. This empty space. It's what you wanted all along. It's what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill, but it's my heart. Is that the cry of anybody's this heart? Empty space. Do you recognize? What you want it all along. That's what God desires is your heart, my heart. It's not a building you want to fill, but it's That's my what God heart. desires to do. This empty space. It's what you want it all along. It's what you want it all along. It's not a building you want to fill. But it's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill. Yeah, God. But it's my heart. This empty space. This empty space is what you wanted all along. What you wanted all along. Say it's not a it's Come, my yes. heart. Come on, this is where you ask God. This is where you ask God and say, God, I want everything that you have for me. I want to hear your voice, God. I, 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 yeah, God I'm asking God. I want to hear the clarity of your voice. I know some say it's not real. I know some say that that can't happen. But God, I want to hear you. I want to open up the Bible and actually hear you speaking to me. I want to be encouraged, Lord God, by what I'm reading in the scripture. I want to wake up, Lord God, and rather than just having a hunger for food or a hunger for coffee or certain earthly things, I want to wake up and be hungry for your voice, hungry for your word. I want to wake up, Lord God, and rather than wanting to call my friend or call my girl or call him or her, I want to call you because I know that you want to fill me. I know that you have the best interest for me. It's empty. It's what you wanted all along. And if you want my heart, you got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. If you want Come on. Can y'all say that? You God. If you want my heart, Are you willing to talk you to him? You got it. God, if you, you want got it. it. If you want my heart, you got it. And let me tell you something. You he wants your you heart. Got it. If you want my heart, Woo. You, got it. you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. If Woo. you want You got it. 
We just thank you right now, Lord God, that this moment, this moment is a deposit. Thank you, Lord, that you have made a deposit in us. Thank you, Lord God, because you count us worth it. You deposit, you pour in to your sons and daughters. And in fact, Lord God, you love it when we are empty empty of the things of this world, empty of our own pride, our own arrogance, our own ideas, because you then pour into us and give us everything that we need. This is also, Lord God, us depositing or giving back to you what's already yours. We say this heart that you caused to beat this heart that you enlivened, we give it to you. And we say, have your way in the name of Jesus. Listen, if you're here today and you don't have a, a relationship with God, this God that we've been teaching about, we invite you into relationship with Jesus Christ. This is not about checking off a box this is not about, hey, let me make sure I'm, I'm going to be able to get into heaven. This is about living the abundant life, the full life, the blessed life that God has for you. It only comes through forgiveness of sin and receipt of his amazing grace because of Jesus' death on the cross. I can't get in because my grandma was in. I can't get in because my mama was in. God is speaking to me. He's speaking to you. Saying, I come that you might have life. Will you respond? Will you respond? Maybe you're here today and you don't have a church, church home that you're connected to, a church family. We would love to be your church family. We would love to see God work in and through you in this place called Macedonia. We invite you to take a step of faith and to get connected. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My sister's coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. Can you? Come on. Can somebody give God a praise right there? Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Uh, she's not coming. She, she, she a leader. She already, she coming to help. <laughs> Listen, I need, I need my leaders. I need y'all sitting up at the front, close to the front, so they don't get confused and think 
Thank you coming to join. Amen. She, she already connected. Praise God. Praise God. But if you're here, if you're here, and it's the Lord talking at your heart, saying the day's the day, we invite you. Even after we dismiss, there'll be some leaders down here at the front to meet you at the point of your need. Can I just, I just want to celebrate, uh, I want to celebrate that uh, over the last couple of months, uh, we've had over 50 people join, get connected to our church. Come on, come on, the Bible says heaven rejoices over one. But I said 50 folks have come in and been connected, and we give God praise. Now, many of those, many of those are coming and saying, I want to rededicate my life. Many of those are coming and saying, I need to get connected to a church home, and we celebrate that. Hallelujah. But I want you to know, there are also many of those who are coming and saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. This Jesus that you all are preaching, this Jesus that you all are singing about, this Jesus that you all are worshiping, he has touched my heart. And I want to get connected. And so we give God praise. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Listen, family, uh, we're going we're gonna to depart just in a moment. If you take your seats just for a moment, listen again, even after we have dismissed if you want to get connected, if you want to give your life to the Lord, or if you just need prayer, after we dismiss, there'll be some folks back up front uh, to meet you at the point of your need. Amen? Amen? Anybody blessed today? Anybody encouraged today in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Anybody blessed by this, this worship team back here? Hey! Yeah! Praise God. God is good. God is good. Listen, family, uh, before we depart, I want to give us an opportunity to give unto the Lord, to sow uh, in, into, this, into this ministry, to trust that God is doing an amazing work. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have to, to lead in this space, but I'm grateful for the way that you all are responding that God might get the glory. I shared already that we've had over 50 folks coming into our community. In, in, the, in the midst of a pandemic, y'all, in the last couple of months even, families coming and, 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 and men and women coming, children coming, saying, I want to be connected to a place where I can grow. And that happens because we've got faithful leaders, faithful servants, and faithful givers in this house. Amen. Amen. Listen, as a part of what we do here, uh, we, see, we see people being strengthened. We see our, our children and our youth and our teens growing in the Lord. Uh, coming up in the month of May uh, is our, our Scholarship Sunday where we bless, we bless our high school seniors. Amen. Amen. And we're, we're looking forward, we're looking forward already uh, to giving, to sowing into them $15,000. I know that we've already, already got committed uh, to these high school seniors. Amen. And that happens because we've got faithful givers in the house. Amen. Listen, if you've got a high school senior and, and they're not already uh, uh, signed up for graduation Sunday, May 22nd, go on our website, make sure you sign them up. Uh, it is past the deadline to apply for our scholarship, but we still want to recognize every high school senior. Amen? And we want to show you love. If you're watching online, please make sure you do just that. Also, I want to encourage you, again, as our church continues to grow and, and people are blessed, I'm encouraged uh, our before and after we say I do class uh, is back in full effect. Uh, started on last Saturday. I believe you can still jump in uh, if, you, if you need to. We've got 14 couples. That's for married couples and dating couples. Amen. Amen. Y'all can clap for that. Praise God. <laughs> y'all got real quiet like y'all don't realize uh, that healthy children are built in healthy families. Like, like you, don't, you don't realize that, that some of the scars and issues that we have, come on somebody, are related to issues that our parents, y'all ain't saying, they ain't going to say nothing to me, but... Some of it is related to what our parents went through. And so if I can, if we can get people into healthy relationships, oh man, all of y'all ought to be shouting, 
whether you married or single or what, and say, do it, Lord. Our communities would look different if some folk had just been taught healthy communication principles. And so it's happening, it's happening, it's happening in your church. Praise God. All kind of things going on, something for every generation. Uh, make sure, make sure, uh, seniors, y'all stay, y'all stay plugged into our, our first and third Wednesdays, our senior Bible study. So much for you to get your hands on and your heart on if you'll connect. Thank you all for, for being faithful in your giving. Options to give are going to appear on the screen. Uh, you can give in so many ways. You all know uh, we try to keep it electronic in this season, but uh, even on the way out, if you've got to give through an envelope or through a check or whatever, there are a couple folks at the doors. Uh, but electronically, you can give through Cash App. You can give through PayPal. You can give through text to give. All you got to do is text MCOP space and your number, 50, 25, 100, whatever it is, and then then you hit that send button to 45888 and you'll be in our, re uh, in our cycle to give consistently. Uh, you can also set up your giving on a recurring basis so you don't got to do it every time. Amen? Now, I know everybody don't get paid the same, but, but uh, many of us get paid the same. And so our giving can be similar. And so we can set it up so we can be uh, on point for God's glory in our church. Amen? I'm going to pray as we give on this morning. God, we thank you once again for meeting us today. We thank you for encouraging us. We thank you, Lord God, that when we, when we call out according to your will and your way, when we say we need a word, that you respond. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are giving your sons and daughters exactly what they need in this moment. You're giving them what they need, Lord God, for their families, Lord God, for uh, their careers, for their ministry, Lord God, for direction, Lord God. In every single way, we trust you. So we pray now, Lord God, that as we give, that you would use this to advance your kingdom. I pray that every penny, every penny would go to advance your kingdom. And we will, Lord God, as leaders, be good stewards to that end that your people will say, God is glorified through this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's take a moment and give cheerfully unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, maybe you already gave. I got my journal on recurring. And so when I give on these moments, I'm really just giving an extra offering. But if you already gave, it's a good moment right here to dance. Hey! Hey! Come on, ladies, come on, ladies. Y'all gonna let me dance by myself? Thank you, I got one over here. I got one in the balcony. I know you're gonna dance.
Hallelujah. Listen, fam. Oh, young adults, make sure y'all sign up for Acoustic Soul this Friday, 7 o'clock, right here. Hey. Love y'all. Bless y'all. Can't wait to see y'all soon. Listen, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he lift up the light of his countenance on you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Amen and amen. Love y'all. See y'all soon.